Hey, what's up, guys? Chris Lee, a.k.a. Tony Sanger, songwriter, producer, professional audio engineer, owner of United Destiny Entertainment. Check this out. I got a great tutorial for you guys today. Um, I usually hit you guys with freebies every now and then in different programs such as FL Studio, Adobe Audition, Pro Tools, Cubase, Logic, whatever the program may be. But this tip that I'm going to give you guys today on EQing is going to be in any program across the board. I don't care what you use. Nuendo, Cubase, uh, FL Studio, uh, Adobe Audition, CoEdit Pro, whatever it may be. This is a key tip. It's going to help you out. Uh, it's going to help make your music sound more professional. Uh, it's going to make your clack sound more clear, bring out some clarity, take out some unwanted sounds. So really check me out. I'm going to be talking real fast in this video, so I want you to pay attention. All right, so right off the back, let me go ahead and turn this on. I'm making like a trap style beat right now. I'm going to go ahead and play it real quick. All right, so in my last video that I posted, make sure you guys check that out. I posted a video about uh, how to control the your sub kick and your, your low end sound and your beats and how you shouldn't use too much of it because it can destroy the clarity of your tracks. Well, I told you guys that I was going to make a video going deeper into detail, and that's exactly what I'm going to do with this video. So check it out. I don't have a lot of time, so let me get right into it. First thing. Uh, is a kick. Here's a kick by itself. I'm take my EQ out of it and compress it. All right, I'm using the Lex kick. Notice that it has some kind of clicking sound uh, at the high end, the top end of the of the thump, and I don't want that. I don't want that in the beat. I don't like it. I think it sounds like crap. It probably happened when whoever made the sound pack layer different kicks together and they try to use it as a so-called attack um, way of putting some attack in the beat that's totally fine some producers do it I personally don't do it I don't like it I just figure EQ properly and you won't run into those issues uh, <clears throat> so the first thing that I did right now in the situation is I want to clean that up I want to take that click out of there and I want to make my kick sound a bit more controlled and just a little bit thinner so it can be the the attack, the thump to mesh with my sub kick. So check it out. First, what I did with the EQ was I went ahead and I boosted at 120 hertz. Why? Because that's the strongest part of the frequency in this actual kick. So what I did was to take out that little clicking sound was I went ahead and cut around 2K. And that was to take the click, uh, the clipping sound out of the actual beat, the actual kick itself. And what I did was I just wanted to bring up that thump out of this kick before I did any compression to make it stand out more so I wouldn't have to compress as much. So check it out once more. Without it. With it. Big difference, totally big difference. If you know anything about EQ and properly, you got good ears, then you know that's a big difference. Now, right away, you guys might say that it sounds a little bit more thinner than the actual original kick, and that's fine because it's not about how something sounds alone and how it sounds all together in a track. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add the sub kick. And what I did with this first kick, uh, let me go ahead and just show you guys. I went ahead and added the CLA compressor. So watch the thump that it gives it. <clears throat> My bad. We just want to play the kick. Compressor. Makes it tighter. Cleans it up. Really makes it thump. Without it. So I really love the sound of that kick compress properly, EQ properly. Now we're going to play with the sub. <clears throat> now this, what I did to show you guys is I took a really crappy 808 um, and I'm going to show you guys exactly what I did with it. So for the 808 by itself, 
without everything on it, this is what it sounds like. It, it sounds disgusting. Um, so what I did was I'm actually going to mix it enough with the kick, my attack kick, to make it balanced enough to where it sounds good together. So the first thing I did was remember on the attack kick, I boosted at 120 hertz. Well, this time around for the sub kick, I went ahead, uh, my low end, I went ahead and cut at 121 hertz because I want the low end there, but I just want the body. I don't want the low end kick to be overpowering. Remember, I talked to you guys about that in the last video. You don't want your low end or your sub kick to be overpowering because the low end frequency has an easy way of masking high end frequencies and basically can make it seem like there's no high end clarity information there in general. So I did exactly that. I cut it. I obviously cut the high end because we don't need none of these high frequencies when it comes to a sub kick. We just want that low end boom to help carry the attack kick that we got. So together, that's, that's EQ. And then a compressor to control it. Because as the sub kick changes octaves, the sound and the volume of the actual uh, sub kick itself, it changes. It Sometimes it's low, sometimes it's high, but it's not uncontrolled. It's uncontrolled, like it's not balanced basically. So I use the compressor to balance out the highest peaks of the track with the lowest peaks and bring them together. So it's even all the way through. Without it, with it. Without. All right, so you hear the difference in that. Then I went ahead and used the uh, X bass. Uh, this is a great, great plug-in. Uh, it's an analog bass saturation plug-in uh, for any kind of bass, low end, anything like that. You have the frequency ranges, the enhancers, the saturation, the volume. I basically use this to give it a little more baseline body to fatten it up a little bit uh, so we can, because I made my sub kick kind of thin doing all the EQing, this just pretty much made it a little bit more fatter and controlled. Without it, with it, it makes it more fatter and makes it more present. Okay, so with that being said, like I talked to you guys about in the last video, it's always important to take your high-end information instruments that got, you know, anything over 2K all the way up to 10K, 15K, 20K. If it has that high-end information and you're looking for the clarity, don't be afraid to boost that a little bit in those frequencies. So since this is a hi-hat instrument now, what I did was I cut all the low-end information because it's not needed. And what I did with the hi-hat was I boosted around 4K just a little bit. So check it out. That's without it. Listen to that hat. With it. All right. <clears throat> so exact, basically, with that being said, you want to do that with all your instruments. If it's meant to have nice mid-range, then it might... You want to give it some high end, but not a lot, but you can cut the low end. If it's meant to have low end uh, information and really stand out, then you want to clean it up by cutting the high, high information. Same thing with the highs. If it's meant to have high information, then you don't need the lows and the mids. You want to keep some mids, but not a lot of mids. So with that being said, now I'm going to show you the most important part of the video. All right, we already had 10 minutes. Okay, so with that being said, check this out. This is the most crucial part of the video. I have a snare sound here. Actually, um, check this out. It's like a brassy sound. 
I'm gonna pull up the EQ though. By itself, it sounds good. It don't sound that bad, but I will say it's a bit muddy and I don't dig it. Also, it has this very annoying ring at the top of the instrument that I just absolutely hate. I do not want it in my my sound. I don't want it in the track in general. So since I won't be able to take it out permanently, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys some really important EQs to help be able to take some of that out of the track so it don't stand out as much. So let's check this out. First thing I did with the EQ, I knocked off some of the low end because it has it sounded kind of muddy down there. I don't need all that low end information. I want the sub to be able to handle that frequency. Here, I just want to keep some of the mids, take out the high ring information to boost the highs just a little bit. So as you can see here, that's exactly what I did. I got a roll off going to 70 hertz. And then here, notice the same thing that I did with the sub. The sub information in the actual sub kick was I went ahead and cut at 121 hertz because I don't want that frequency to clash with whatever I did with the kick. So I cut it there as well. <clears throat> now, this is going to be the most key important part. You see I have three different frequencies here. So I'm just going to basically do it again for you guys. And I'm going to just take it out. <clears throat> I'm going to show you guys how to sweep this thing. All right, so with that being said, I'm going to just move these frequencies up. Now I'm about to sweep it because I'm going to show you guys how to take that bell sound out. You're not going to get it out perfectly, but you can take out the majority of it. So check it out. You hear, you hear how loud that bell sound got? That's what you want to take out of the track. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that probably around, yeah, about negative six. Already, you can hear a huge difference. Check it out. That's without it. With it. I basically took out the majority of that bell. Now, there's still more in there. So let's go ahead and boost the next frequency up and try to sweep it because I want to be able to take out as much as possible of that sound, that ringing noise as possible. Oh, you see, you got a frequency right there already. I ain't even too much out to sweep it. But let's just double check. All right, so I'm going to cut that just a little bit because I don't like that sound as well. I want to kind of take that out of there. Same thing with the next frequency. Ah, you see that? Uh, I had to go backwards this time. Uh, with that frequency because I didn't catch that one at first. Um, and sometimes that's what it takes. There's always more than one one range that you might need to take out. So that's why you sweep and double check. I do not want that in a beat, period. 
So let's take that out. Let's go ahead and cut that. Now, I know you guys might be thinking, man, that sounds kind of thin. You're absolutely right. It do sound kind of thin because we're taking that information out, but we don't want that. You don't want that kind of crap in your tracks, period. Even when you're mixing, you know, toms and snares, when you're mixing drums, this is a great technique to help take out some of that ringing noise when you're playing toms or snares, when you're playing on the drum kit or something like that. So what I want to do now is since I took a lot of that information out, I just want to go ahead and use this bandwidth this time to go ahead and boost some of the highs to put some of that information back in there and then compress it just to make it sit right. All right, so now listen to it. Without it, you hear that bell real strong with it. Now with the compressor. Nice, nice and clean sound. Like I said, that bell ain't going to go away perfectly when you're playing it by itself, but it won't be as noticeable with the rest of the instruments. One more quick little tip that I wanted to show you guys um, before I end this video. Where are we sitting at? Wow, almost longer than the other video. All right, so check it out. So now, just to make it a long story short, if you guys want to get creative, get creative with your hi hats. It really stereo feel, stereo imaging with any mixing is key to any track. It just makes people feel good and make it takes them to other places. So all I did was I changed this from velocity, and I went ahead and changed it to pan. And that's all I did was change the pans. Uh, I moved some of the faders, the pan knobs up and down to be able to give it that left and right stereo, stereo image back to back sound. So yeah, that was just another quick tip that I wanted to show you guys um, with stuff that I do here in FL Studio. Uh, if you guys need mixing and mastering, I know these videos are key for you guys to try to learn this stuff on your, your own, but it's going to take time for you guys to really get good. So take advantage. I'm a professional audio engineer. I mix and master. You guys know that you've been watching me and following me for a while. If this is your first time watching me on YouTube. Go check out my other videos. Go check out my videos about the music business, knowledge from the industry, mixing and mastering, vocals, recording, just a whole nine yards. You, my channel has a lot of great information. So please comment, please subscribe. Uh, please let me know what you think. Like the video, share this video. Uh, I'm really trying to build my clientele up more and more. I'm really trying to help you locals out. So if you locals really want a chance to take your music to the next level, you can contact me to mix and master your material. I got great prices. I got beats. Uh, not only that, I'm doing a $75 an hour uh, Skype session tutorial to basically help you guys understand EQs, compressors, reverbs, delays, mixing and stuff better so you can take your music to the next level. If you guys want to take advantage of that, please contact me. Chris Lee, a.k.a. Tooney, represents San Antonio, singer, songwriter, producer, professional audio engineer, owner of United Destiny Entertainment. Check me out. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Peace.